both teams dynamic over time at the Olympics. The Americans, two gold medals. They're the defending champs from 2018. Canada, four gold medals all time. And Sarah Fillier, five goals. Marie-Philippe Poulain waiting. Down low, right in front. Shot score! Power play goal. Jenner on the spot. Canada strikes. It's 1-0. Back at feet in front. Oh, good follow-up score! Danny Cameron Easy, the hard work pays off. USA has tied it up at one. Abby Rock to the left side. Kessel across, backhand try, in and out score. Alex Carpenter buries the backhand, her fourth of the Olympic Games. USA up 2 1. She did play in 2014. Five goals at the World Championship. Here's a turnover. Nurse spinning drive shot score. And there is your answer as Jenner's double down. Canada level at two. Billy's lost her stick. Sandy Hart keeps the cycle going for Canada. Natalie Spooner. That can't try in front. Ratray scores. Surprise, surprise. Jamie Lee Ratray puts Canada back on top. Quickly done. Weaving, waiting, wrist shot blocked, again, done. Stolen by Marie, Philippe Poulin, and she's got a lane. Here comes the captain, Poulin, a step in, shoots and stop, but there's a penalty coming up, and that is a penalty shot coming up for Marie, Philippe Poulin. So here she comes. Marie, Philippe Poulin, to the forehand, scores! Captain Canada's got another one, and that bench is all fired up. 4-2. The Canadians lead. Perfect in Beijing thus far. What a performance. And Rene Tapien as Canada defeating the USA. Day five of the Olympics. You just watched Canada defeat the United States 4 to 2. Four RBC Olympians on that team Renata Fast, Sarah Nurse, Captain Canada, of course, Mary Philippe Poulain and goaltender Anne Rene Deban. To break it all down, who better than two-time Olympic champion <laughs> Cheryl Pounder? Join me, my friend. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Coffee keeps me up. You know, the schedule's a little bit different. The hair's normally curly. It's straight now. But that's uh, a lot of sleep at different times. And so here we are, but loving the Olympics. I was just hearing uh, the replays of the goals, and I get the chills every time. I feel like I'm playing sometimes, but the energy is infectious and just, just loving the energy of the Olympics. What's special about this Team Canada? You know, there's there's so many things we can talk about when we talk about this team. Yeah, you can see the chemistry between all of them, right? It's wherever it's, you want to go. Like I, I, yeah, yeah, no, wherever you want to go. I mean, the the energy does seem unbelievable. It is unbelievable. And lines one through four, all of their D, they're contributing. And one of the things that I've noticed in particular is the versatility and the ability to get speed. This is a team that we are seeing that is so fast with their movement, their IQ, they can manipulate the D, they've got a layered attack, and they can score at any angle. So I think it's the best Team Canada that ever witnessed. And I'm saying that lightly because in 2006, I actually believed it was the best team. And I'm looking at this team right now, and I'm like, I could not skate with these women. They're unbelievable. <laughs> and their shots, they've just changed so much. And that's just a product of technology and the work that they put into their training. So they deserve everything they're getting. And it was world class last night. Hot take from Cheryl Pounder, the greatest Team Canada we have ever seen. Um, we were outshot, though. Team Canada being outshot by the United States. Talk to me a little bit about Anne Renee Debian. She looked to be standing on her head yesterday. Well, they should all be buying her a drink after this is all over because I'm telling you, in that first period, they were outshot 16 to 4. They're going to have to wait for that, I know, but they were outshot 16 to 4. And in particular, uh, early in a game, you need your goaltender to come up big for you, especially when there's nerves. Uh, you're playing a little bit tight and they weren't managing up very well in their own zone. And that's a product of just not having a lot of pressure early in the tournament. But Anne Renee, I am telling you, she saw the puck. She challenged when they needed a break. She was able to hold on. No second shot opportunity so they could get the face off. And really, Canada could have been down by a few goals. So she really mm -hmm. kept them in the game early. They got their legs about them. They found ways to get to the net. And some of their veterans really paid the price in front of the net and got some goals to get them back in the game. 
Captain Canada, of course, Mary Philippe Poulin taking that uh, penalty shot. I don't like penalty shots, nor me <laughs> I don't think anyone me does. Me neither. What, what do you see from her that just makes you think she's the greatest of all time? Well, she is. And when you talk about her, you have to look at the clutchness. I mean, there's so many amazing players that have come before her and have set the bar so high. But when everything is on the line, this woman just delivers. Penalty shot. When we go back to the last games, four games this past year, in the last six months against the Americans that have gone into overtime, three of them that Canada won, guess who scored every single OT winner? And a lot of people at the beginning of the term are like, oh, no, Poulin, she's not scoring. I'm like, she still has two points per game, right? And she's leading in ozone possession time. So the game's been on her stick, but when the pressure's at its highest, she's unbelievable. And what a lot of people also don't know about her is it's a complete game. So as that leader, that superstar, she's also fighting in the corner. She's battling, she's leading by example, she's blocking shots. And those are the things that it takes to win. And she's willing to do each and everything that she needs to lead by example. And the goals just follow her around because she's got an amazing skill set and, and one that will be known forever. What do you think, and I'm, I'm making you put your athlete hat on again, what do you think the conversation uh, sounded like in the American locker room after uh, yesterday's game? You know, it's interesting. When you look at both teams and, and Joel Johnson with Team USA, the coach there, I think he's waiting for that final game. And, of course, you got to get there. And Hillary Knight was quoted as saying it's, it's process. So if we take care of everything we need to, we will wind up in that gold medal game and we will be ready. So you don't know whether there's a game of chess going on right now. And certainly you want to win that preliminary game because you want to make sure that you've set the tone and you've dictated the tempo. But when it comes down to that, I think the Americans know it comes down to 60 minutes on February 17th. I think they probably felt pretty good with their game. Their ozone possession time was almost double the Canadians. Uh, they just weren't able to put it past and Rene Debian. But the Canadians had some good scoring chances. They let off the rush. So I think the Americans, when they went back to the room, they say, hey, hey we had them in the first. We had them on their heels. We just have to complete the game and make sure that we're doing that for a full 60, which is kind of cliche, I know, but it's true. <laughs> you you have no cliches. I love talking to you. Um, so <laughs> final question then. How, what does Canada need to do to just keep this momentum uh, going and to really focus eyes on the prize? I think they just have to trust. Trust what they brought to this point. The poise and composure that they have showed with the puck throughout the preliminary round up until the first period against the U.S., and you know it as well. When you're an athlete, sometimes you can overtry. And I felt like in the first period, they, they overtried a little bit. And sometimes you have to slow the game down to be able to create the speed. But just trust in their skill sets. Because they have the movement in the play, the ability to just the layered attacks, the varied attacks. And this is the fastest team I've seen. So if they can continue with that pace and the relentless puck pursuit, they can be successful. Cheryl, thank you so much for being on this show. I miss you, my friend. Off camera, we were talking about how we're all just sleeping kind of like this because we have so much makeup on and we're working 28 hours a day. So I really, really appreciate you taking the time to be on this show. Yeah, You're welcome this back has anytime. Been, this has been on since 11 o'clock last night. So we're going to work on 24 hours where I just got hosed down because it saved me half an hour of makeup and hair time so I could prepare. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you thank you so much cheryl pounder you got to come back on the show in a few days time really appreciate you awesome. we also Thanks. chatted to historic bronze medal winning canadian ski jump team check out what they had to say about making history 137 and a half points and here we go the canadian mackenzie boyd close trying to make history for canada He's got a good one. This one's going on. Wow! Mackenzie Boyd close. That might do it. Oh my goodness. I don't believe it. What an incredible performance. 101.5. Matthew Abigail, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, it was a little bit of a surprise. It was a surprise to you, it was a surprise to the country. I want to actually just read out some of your tweets. Matthew, you tweeted, what is even happening in real time yesterday? And Abigail, you tweeted, 
Winning a medal is like kind of trippy, to be honest. <laughs> what, what was it like waking up as an Olympic medalist? Matthew, let's start with you. Oh man, it still uh, it still doesn't feel real. Um, yeah, yesterday I was live tweeting. Um, <laughs> Twitter is the best for that. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I gotta let my fans know how I'm feeling. And I uh, I was completely blown away last night. And um, you know. Every time that goes by, it's just a, sets in a little bit more, but still, still doesn't feel real. Abigail? Yeah, same, same kind of feelings as Matthew. Uh, that tweet that you read out was actually from Mackenzie. I just retweeted it. He's, uh, oh. <laughs> he's got some wise words that seem to resonate pretty strongly with me. So, um, but yeah, I mean, every, every, every second that goes by when I just kind of think about it and it hits me, it's like a, I have almost a mini panic attack just realizing what's actually happened and I can't wait. I was telling Matthew this morning, I can't wait to actually have the medal in my hand and I think that's when it's really gonna set in or when we get on the podium this afternoon, I think that's gonna, that's gonna feel pretty real for us. Oh, Canadians are so proud, obviously a historic moment for Team Canada. Um, you do get the medal in what, 12 hours time? What, uh, what are your plans for celebrations, Matthew? Oh, well, we already celebrated with the team last night a bit. <laughs> Everyone was just so happy. It was just all of us laughing and hugging each other so much. And um, so after today, um, I don't know. We're just going to have to do whatever comes naturally. we got nothing planned, but I'm sure it's going to be more <laughs> hugging, more cheering, more just like ecstatic yells and whatnot. <laughs> You have to keep the good times rolling, that's for sure. We're at the Olympic Games, so soak it in. Um, I, I would love to just hear, uh, let's break it down a little bit. I mean, I think so many Canadians uh, were tuning in, of course, seeing history unfold before their eyes. What goes into the perfect jump, Abigail? Can you, can you break it down a little bit for, for myself and Canadians? Um, I think it really depends there's so many variables in this sport. Uh, it's very technical, very sensitive sport. So things right down to wind uh, have a huge, huge effect, especially on this jump. We noticed that having just a slight tailwind or, or, or a headwind could really affect your distance. Um, I think what goes down into a perfect jump is really dependent on a personal thing. And we got really lucky. I think we all had some of our, our best jumps um, on that hill uh, in competition. And it just so happened to unfold at the right time. But yeah, really uh, what goes into a great jump is it starts from the top, right? When you get into a good position, um, you're solid, you're you're set, you're ready to go. You've got good speed, um, and then you're if you come towards the takeoff, you nail the the timing, the direction. Really, the whole goal of ski jumping is to maintain your speed um, and and to gain speed uh, as you progress through the jump. So, all of that stuff comes together, and then of course you're you're landing past ideally past the K point in in a telemark landing to get those perfect style points, and that's kind of what I would say would be an ideal jump. I think uh, you had about 37 million people yelling at their TV last night. So uh, I, I was just thinking, oh my gosh, I don't think I would have the courage to do this, but it was just amazing. You made it look so easy. Um, I'm a kid from Calgary, so I, I got to grow up looking at uh, the ski jumps in Calgary, of course. So congratulations once again. Um, just quickly, fun little question. Tell me something that maybe people don't know. I don't know, a lot of people don't know this, but we actually live like maybe five minutes apart. Um, we're both from the Springbank area, and uh, we actually both have like a couple dogs, a couple mm -hmm. cats. Yeah. Very, uh, very much a zoo at each house. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> We've known each other for forever. Like, yeah. I started ski jumping when I was six. Uh, I don't know how old you were when I was. Yeah, I was like, I think nine yeah. when I started. Yeah, we started so. probably the same, at right around the same time. So we've grown up together. Like, yeah. he feels like a, almost a, like a brother to me. So that's pretty wow. cool. And same thing with Mackenzie. Like I've always looked up to Mackenzie as a as a role model, and to be able to compete on a team with him is like so cool. And Allie as well. I've she's on my team. We train together. We train together with the boys a lot. We're just like one little family, one little group that just we're all we're all living away from home. We're all living in Slovenia, but we're together. And it's it was so so cool to be able to compete with the four yeah. of us together and to to achieve this. Yeah, and to share this experience. Yeah. With you what, know, it, it, some of my it's, it, friends. It's it's so amazing, it's so and amazing. Congratulations, congratulations once again. Once again. I want to know, what does ski jumping look like for a six-year-old? Not much. <laughs> I mean, quite different from what you see on the Olympics. 
<laughs> yeah, um, it, um, it's more like uh, you've got usually got alpine skis on, and you just kind of slide off a hill in a in a ball. Uh, usually, in equipment that is so old or so oversized that it just yeah, it's not much. You don't really fly. Yeah. <laughs> you quite, just a, well, quite a few well. tumbles, falls, and then you pick yourself up, and then you're like, well, that was pretty fun, and yeah. then you go back up again. Yeah. You are Olympic medalist now. Congratulations. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on RBC Spotlight. Uh, again, Canadians just fell in love with you and your team, and uh, congratulations. It really was just such a historic moment for the country and, and for your team. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Please welcome to the show PGS athlete and RBC Olympian Jennifer Hawkrig. Jennifer, how are you doing? It's been 24 hours. You made your Olympic debut. Um, unfortunately, an equipment malfunction. Please just walk me through it. How do you feel today? Hi, thank you so much for having me on. Um, I think I'm still coming to terms with it at the moment. As you said, it's only been um, a day since I had my first qualifying. And I don't know, I think <laughs> the best way to explain it is my heart is so full from just being here and finally being able to call myself an Olympian, but it's also pretty broken. Um, it's not how I wanted my Olympic debut to happen. It's not what I prepared for. Um, I just really wanted to bring something home, a result home for everyone who's been supporting me through this journey. So. Yeah, I think it'll take some time to come to terms with, but some mixed feelings at the moment. What actually happened with your equipment, if you don't mind me asking? What what was the problem there? Um, so I started, I did 10 gates, and um, over a knoll on my toe side, my binding just exploded, is the best way to explain it. Um, all of a sudden, I was setting my edge. Things were going well at the top of my run. Um, and I felt really quickly just my front binding break and I was on my stomach pretty quickly. So it was pretty fast. Honestly, I don't really remember the entire thing. I just remember stand, like sort of spinning around and seeing my one leg not attached to my snowboard. And I was like, something, something's wrong. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you for being on the show. Um, what have you done in the last, you know, 12, 16 hours just to kind of regroup? I, I do really appreciate you taking the time to chat today. Of course. Um, I'm so happy to be here, obviously. Um, luckily, I have a really good support system here. Um, my boyfriend is also on the Canadian team, and he competed yesterday, as well as a couple of my best friends are on the team. So I'm really lucky to have that here in Beijing, especially with my friends and family being so far away. Um, so I just, I think I just took the day to sort of try and start coming to terms with everything, but also just be excited for them and how well they competed yesterday um, and just really try to take in the moment because I know this is my Olympics. This is what my experience is. And I just had to make the most of the situation yesterday um, because I don't want to look back and have any regrets. Uh, so yeah, I really am just trying to take it moment by moment at the moment. You mentioned your support system. Um, Adrian Arsenault brought your, your folks on during the opening ceremony and your father was just crying. He was just so proud of you um, and your journey. I, I would love to just know, you know, what has their uh, love and support done for your Olympic campaign? Um, it's everything. Uh, my mom's the one who got me on a snowboard when I was four years old. My siblings were snowboarding at that age and all I wanted to do was be as cool as them. So really the only reason I'm here is because of my family and my support system, as well as my friends who are back home. Um, I got a picture yesterday as soon as I came down, I obviously was devastated. Um, and it was my entire family at my house watching the games. Um, and they were just still as excited to even just see me come halfway down the hill. So 
that really brought my spirits back up just to see no matter what the result was, no matter what the outcome was, they were equally as proud and they were equally as excited. So um, it just means everything. It's really getting me through it. Um, and just to be able to share this journey with them is really means everything. What did they say to you after your run? Um, I actually FaceTimed my sister. Um, and because I was like, I just need someone at home to speak to right now. And they were all just screaming and they're all just cheering. Um, everyone was in the camera and I was like, I don't know, I just lost it at that moment. Cause I was like, wow, they're still like so excited. And just like to have that support, um, they didn't care about how the outcome was. They didn't care about my results. So, um, it, it meant everything. It really brought me back up and was like, I, I'm here. I have to look at the positives of the situation. So what is the largest positive that you'll take out of this experience? Oh, that's so hard. Um, I think there's been so many, I've only been here a week, but it's been such an amazing learning experience that I think my biggest positive is just to look back and like, I just looked at the rings one day and I was like, I've been dreaming of this my entire life. Like, um, as I said, no matter what happens, like, this is what I dreamed of since I was four years old, since I got on the snowboard. And the fact that I'm just here seeing these rings in person and to be able to put my bib on with the Olympic rings on it, I think that feeling is just something I've never felt before. Um, so that will definitely be my biggest positive is just being able to be here for sure. I did some uh, research and you said you had three kind of lifelong goals to compete in Beijing 2022. <laughs> so you just did that. Uh, to finish your MBA and to live in a different country. I would love to know just about the last two. What are you taking for your MBA and um, where are you hoping to live? <laughs> well, um, I haven't started my MBA. I actually just oh. graduated uh, my undergrad in commerce, but okay. my goal is definitely to do that someday. Um, I have, as you mentioned, I've been an RBC Olympian since 2019. Um, on the brand marketing team, which has been such an amazing experience to be gaining professional experience as well as put my education actually to use. Um, so definitely looking forward to probably going back to school at some point um, to just continue my education. Um, and then a different country, that's hard. Um, I spent a summer in London, England once, so I think I would love to live there. Um, so yeah, that's maybe my future. <laughs> That's lovely. A sight set perhaps on Italy 2026? Yeah, I haven't. I guess right now I'm still sort of living day yeah. by day. Um, but definitely something to speak about, something to look forward to, because um, just having this Olympic experience is something that I don't know how I would never not want to feel this again. Like, it's such an amazing experience. So we'll see. We'll take it day by day as now, sort of, comes to terms with this games and then look forward. Thank you so much for taking the time, Jennifer. Jennifer JJ Hawkrig, really, really appreciate you being on RBC Spotlight and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Coming up next, what you have to look forward to, freestyle skiing, men's big air. Look out for Evan McEachran. He's hoping to bring home some hardware to Canada. That has been our show. Day five of the Olympics, it's all happening. I usually spend my afternoons in the Oval. Speed skating is not competing today, so we're gonna bring you some sights and sounds of Beijing in the next few days. I'm going on an adventure with my crew. Thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern on all CBC digital channels. Dancing on a rock and roll. Rock and roll.
dance and modern rock and roll.